Dear brothers, dear sisters, peace to you. Peace to your heart, peace. Not as the world gives it, not as the world invokes it. But the peace, that only Christ can give, only the Holy Spirit love, can give. This is the peace that Jesus wished to his own, in the moment after the resurrection. His own, not bound by what is worldly, but his own, by virtue of a higher bond, by virtue of the bond of the Spirit, these are truly his own. Here, I address these words to you, dear faithful, so that all that is happening today, does not make the faith of the children of God waver, nor does it make the faith of all those who profess to be Christians, but raising their eyes to heaven, Christians can invoke God, so he may grant peace. Raise your eyes to heaven, invoke God and repeat what Jesus taught us, Father, may your will be done. We are living in difficult days, the world is once again prey to the hatred and violence of a few, who for reasons unknown to many, is once again in war. A terrible event, the most terrible, who provokes war, who is the cause of war, is not animated by the Holy Spirit love, the protagonist of this page of the Gospel proclaimed today. But is united to the antagonist spirit of God, to the diabolic spirit. It is united to the spirit of that Beelzebub, that the Pharisees evoked, wanting to associate Jesus to that spirit, but as always, they were very wrong. Those who think they have religious authority, have not understood the Holy Spirit that was present in that man, they have not understood the manifestation of the Holy Spirit that manifested himself in history, through that man. And instead of joining that man, to be able to obtain already then true peace, they have moved war to that man and they have provoked a war more lacerating, more profound of what was already being lived at that time. History has taught nothing and nothing has left in the hearts of so many men, who are unable to grasp and welcome the signs that heaven sends, in time and for time, to be able to give peace to men. And men not accepting the will of the Father, always find themselves in worse wars. Here the Father sent the infant Jesus. The baby Jesus is the sign of an act of infinite mercy of the Father, to give this humanity a new possibility, to be able to live true peace. The world once again, until now has refused the sign of heaven and the consequences are not peace. I addressed an appeal through a magisterial document, to all Christians, to all those who profess to be Christians, to all men of good will, so that peace may be. And today with strength I repeat this prayer, I join the hearts of all of you dear brothers, so that together we can raise to the Father, a heartfelt prayer, so that the war that has begun, may end soon so that so many innocents may not have to suffer. I am thinking especially of these victims, the little ones, the last, the innocents of violence, that the Father in His infinite mercy, that these souls may not suffer. That they may be granted eternal peace, in the hope that men who are Christians and animated by good will may act by all means, to be able to stop the war, to stop every violence. This is the prayer that today, together with you, I want to raise to heaven, with the hope that this appeal may be accepted, and that all those who can act, act with strength, to bring peace. My solidarity to the people who are now suffering violence, to all those who are fleeing, who leave their homes, that leave their affections. Heartbreaking to see families that are divided, where the father leaves the mother and sons, to be able to defend the homeland. And the mother and children, in a wandering without destination, without knowing what awaits them. This is the image that wrenches the heart, that strikes the heart. This is what makes us pray even more, to offer all that one can, so that all this may come to an end. So that love and peace may prevail over violence and war. The gospel we have heard today, leads us to meditate, also on all this, the protagonist is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that in that man God Jesus, was present. Not understood neither by the priests who accused him first, not understood by his own, says the evangelist. His own would be his blood relatives. Who instead of defending Jesus, 
join the Pharisees, to those who held the religious authority of the time, to accuse him. Increasing the load of accusations, he's out of his senses, he's out of his mind, he's wrong, he doesn't realize what he is doing, he goes against the religious authority of that time. They didn't understand him, they didn't love him and they were his closest relatives, the sons of Joseph's brother, of Saint Joseph. Even that family was divided because of Jesus, it is not Jesus that with his wrong behavior caused division in the family. But because two of those sons have welcomed the Holy Spirit that in that man was manifested. Two others instead have discarded the Holy Spirit saying, he's out of his mind. Here is the division that happens in families, for those who want to follow the Holy Spirit that manifests himself in history, and for those who do not understand it. In this case those two who did not understand him, have aligned themselves with those who for the world held the authority, they were supposed to represent God. They have reversed terms, those who had to understand, did not understand. The last, small, those who let themselves be guided by the Holy Spirit, have understood and followed Jesus. Here is history, that repeats itself, that manifests itself. This is the Holy Spirit that manifests himself in history. Dear brothers, it has always been like this and it will always be like this, the Holy Spirit acts. Who understands him, listens and welcomes him, remains united to Jesus, to God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Who instead, does not unite to the Holy Spirit. And maybe thinks he is following the Holy Spirit, joining those who are accredited, but who in reality have lost contact with the Holy Spirit, is lost and blasphemes the Holy Spirit, because this is what Jesus says, whoever blasphemes the Holy Spirit is not saved. The blasphemy against the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven. Many ask themselves what it means to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. In the meantime we understand that there are sins that cannot be forgiven. We understand this with great clarity, because Jesus is very clear on this who blasphemes the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven therefore it is not true that Jesus forgives regardless, it is not true that mercy is free and is for all, as others teach. It is not true. Jesus denies it with force. And it is not true that forgiveness is a right, as someone accredited by the people, in a recent television interview, wanted to proclaim, to be forgiven is a right. No dear brothers, Jesus does not say this, one must deserve forgiveness and one must must be careful what sin one commits, for there are sins that do not receive forgiveness. Who blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, says Jesus, does not receive forgiveness. So one must be well aware of what one is doing and one must think about it beforehand, because afterwards it could be too late. One must deserve God's forgiveness. God is love, God is mercy, but one must be humble, one must ask with sincerity of heart, if one wants to receive grace, one cannot demand, one must ask with sincerity of heart, paying attention to what one does. We are on the eve, dear brothers, of the time of Lent that Wednesday day of Ash Wednesday begins, a time of grace for us Christians. It is an invitation that I address to all of you, so that the heart of the law may be put back at the center, love, prayer and brotherhood, so that even on this, we understand each other well. Jesus said, Mercy I want and not sacrifice. The first fast to which we are called dear brothers, is to fast from what is sin, fasting from what is evil, fasting from what is hatred and violence, fasting from everything that leads us to not to love God and not to love the neighbor. Then good to want to offer something more, a physical fast, a deprivation, a little sacrifice, but never to the detriment of love, brotherhood. Woe to he who offends his brother just because he is tired and nervous, because he is fasting physically. It is going against the law, it is embracing the Pharisaic law to do this. We must keep prayer and brotherhood at the center. This is what we want to return to in this church love. The center of the law, the heart of the law, for God and for our brothers and sisters. 
We must return to those true and authentic teachings of Jesus and overcome the narrow limits of a law, made up of so many human precepts, but has strayed from the heart of the law itself, which is love. That's why then this world is victim of hatred, violence, war. The first war is born in the hearts of men, it is more difficult to ask forgiveness to a brother. That is a fast more difficult than to deprive oneself of something. Return to love God as primary good, return to love your brother as yourself. And Jesus will be pleased. And we will have done well and lived well this time of Lent, that will lead us to to be born again in the Easter of Resurrection. And in this way, we will be able to live again as true brothers. And also in this passage Jesus explains to us the profound meaning of being brothers, not all brothers, as someone teaches, deceiving consciences. Brothers in Christ. He who does the will of the Father is brother, Jesus tells us. Jesus, your brothers are here, your mother, your sister, your brother. He says no, no, my brothers are those who do the will of my Father. We understand well dear brothers, to you I say brothers, one is a brother in Christ, one is a brother the moment one does the will of the Father, one welcomes the Holy Spirit. This is the true brotherhood that we must bring back to the center, without discarding those who are not brothers in Christ, but making things clear. Only in this way will it be possible to truly arrive at true union. The first union I would like there to be among Christians, especially now in this moment, I would like to hear with one voice all Christians, all leaders of Christian churches, proclaim with one voice, No to war, in the name of Jesus, stop the war. I would like to hear the brothers who define themselves Protestants. I would like to hear Orthodox brothers raise their voices in a fratricidal war involving those territories. And all the other brothers who call themselves Christians, with a single voice let's make our Christian voice heard to say no to violence, no to war. Here is brotherhood and then make a heartfelt appeal to the men of goodwill, who have above all governmental responsibilities. So that one acts in every possible way to stop the war. Deploying every possible action to stop the war, not with another war. But by every possible means, St. Francis, when he wanted to try to convert the Sultan, went to his home and tried to talk to him, face to face, to convince him, he didn't do it through an intermediary, making a few hundred meters. Brothers, who wants everything can, it takes will, even if the world is profoundly divided and it would be necessary to rethink also the union of states. That should have common roots to be able to find themselves in the important moments, the so-called Western world is divided it is not united, why? Because until now everyone has thought of their own national and economic interests. And now we find ourselves divided, we need to rethink the union of states, putting at the center the Christian roots of this continent, to then unite, even with those who do not profess as the Christian religion, in a concord between peoples that must focus on the sacredness of life, without ifs and buts, the family, so that this world can progress, as the Father intended and respect and equal dignity, between every human being and between every man and woman. And on this basis sign agreements, so that there will be no violence and killings. In the name of God, stop every war. In the name of the One and Triune God. In the name of Jesus. Stop, before it's too late, even you don't know the consequences that you may face if you don't stop in time. Stop every violence, stop it now. This with the heart, I say to many. And to you dear brothers, I say, pray with faith, do not think that your prayer is not very useful, let's pray. We are a small reality, compared to a world, but that is precious in the eyes of God, is precious in the eyes of the Father, the Father has sent here His Son, the baby Jesus, to refound His covenant with this church, be conscious of the call received and live with dignity to this call. All is important and prayer that the world may recognize that sign, that the Father has wanted to give to this land of love. 
Only in this way can there be true, stable, and lasting peace. When this reality is acknowledged, the world will be able to experience true peace, because this is the will of the Father, and as Jesus told us also today in this page of the Gospel, true peace will be obtained only when the will of my Father will be done. And this is the will of my Father. Let's pray with confidence, so that the Holy Spirit love, can enter many hearts and give love, 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 infinite love, only in this way peace can be stable on earth. This is what Jesus said to his maiden. And these words today, I want to remind to everyone, so that everyone understands that this place, is truly the place chosen by God, to be able to manifest his kingdom and to be able to manifest the stable peace on this earth. Jesus said to his maiden, Terrible is the sin against the Holy Spirit, which consists in denying the truth, which is not just blasphemy, but is denial of the power of God, I am ready to welcome the sinner who repents, but the Pharisees do not want to repent, they despise the penitents and therefore do not put themselves in a condition of being forgiven. But a great sin still is that of denying the conversions of souls because God himself, who transforms and renews them, the sin against my signs can be forgiven, but not that against the effects of the signs in the souls. Denying the reality in the origin of my wonders, of my works, means denying me. There will be peace, but it cannot be a gift. Peace is a conquest and the way to peace is the conversion of so many lukewarm and ignorant souls who wake up at the sound of my voice and become a flame of love and sacrifice at any cost. And know how to be my disciples, and you will lack nothing. So be it.